Hello and welcome everyone back to the Let's Get Wicked podcast. I'm your host Joker underscore Jonesy here and our podcast is all about talking about this little tabletop game um, Villainous by Ravensburger and I am joined by my lovely co-host here Headmaster Ditto. Ditto, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. We were, we were just talking before the show. It is Final Fantasy VII Remake Eve. So for all of you nerds is, right now. And I hope you guys managed to get the pre-download beforehand because otherwise this is going it, it, to... It's going to be a year probably. Uh, the quarantine will have been over by the time that game downloads. Oh, well, yeah. I know so. I was going to say. 100 gigs <laughs> is a lot of gigs. So hopefully they... If, what is it? You know, I keep remembering the fact that there are certain internet providers that actually cap the amount you can download a month. Yeah, it's usually like arbitrarily high, but they definitely exist. Yeah, no, because uh, I, I know I know a couple um, that, and they have the limit cap on theirs. And I was and I was just thinking about this where because I think they have a terabyte, and it's like a hundred gigs for FF Seven Remake. So it literally would so take up a tenth of their downloads a month. Is, which is insane to me. So, God bless you internet providers like my own. God bless you Spectrum that don't have internet caps. At least not yet. And when you do, I will be complaining about it. So, um, But that's <laughs> not what this show is about. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, But this show is a show that I actually have been wanting to do for a long time. And we were just kind of trying to find the right time to talk about it. And I think especially in this age where a lot of us are playing board games online or just games in general a lot more, I think it's time to finally bring up the topic. Um, and the topic is an officially supported version of a digital villainous game. Just going to let that settle yeah. for everyone everyone to absorb for a second. Um, now, what we're going to kind of go over in this show is kind of like you know, what we kind of want from the game as well as, you know, just kind of some generalities of what we would want or, like, that's really what we're talking about. And also maybe just a little bit in relationship with, you know, how it would compare to our current tabletop simulator mod because I definitely think that's also something that needs to be discussed in itself um, because tabletop simulator is fantastic. Um, but obviously it does have its limitations, onto what some of us would actually want from a true digital version of the game. So, um, we'll just get, we'll just get right into it here. Um, Ditto, I'm going to ask you a very straightforward question. If there was a digital version of this game, what is the number one thing that you want? Oh, that is a very difficult question Uh to answer. Uh, mostly because I know the one thing I would want is the one thing I probably would not get. And what is that? Uh, support for modding in custom. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah. No, I get you. Yes. There, there's not a galaxy in which they have an official version uh, that has all of the licensing necessary to allow user input. Yeah. So, kind of one thing, the reason why I want to bring this up a little bit too is that so, one of the blessings of using the Tabletop Simulator mod is that it allows us the community to actually be able to use, make these customs and put them out for people to use relatively easily. Um, especially with relatively easily and in a way that I'm not going to say is difficult to get rid of, but I mean, the tool is there. (laughs) The the tools are there. And I know, especially because Ditto, I know Ditto's a huge fan of the custom scene as well. Now, Mm -hmm. Depending on how, if there, if a digital version existed and how it ended up, like, what types of platforms it can go to, you know, it would be possible, maybe through, like, the Steam Workshop, that someone could, put, like, put together a mod or something like that. But I think that would take a lot more engineering than it, probably It's not have. that it would take a whole lot of engineering. It's that even if someone did manage to pull it off, I mean, with Tabletop Simulator, you don't really have an issue with uploading stuff because you're uploading it mostly just as a community thing. Yeah. Um, if you're going to try to upload something towards something more official, uh, then you start getting into a whole bunch of like copyright and licensing issues that uh, they're certainly not equipped to handle, let alone any individual. So, yeah. Um, now, uh, my hope with this, though, 
um, is that if a digital version did come out, is that a lot of these different characters that people would be wanting, it would actually possibly extend the life of the game because maybe you no, wouldn't yeah, necessarily absolutely. get it in a physical form. Because I think that's one thing that, you know, a lot of, and I'm not saying everyone that listens to this podcast is a general audience, but a lot of the general tabletop audience does not understand is that producing a physical board game takes a lot of different steps that normally don't go into making like a digital medium. Like just like learning about stuff from like Kickstarters and doing a lot of research on my own and even talking to Ravensburger a little bit. There is a lot of steps that go into just producing enough copies to get an, into enough people's hands so they can play it. And the process to actually produce all those materials is very expensive and time consuming. Like literally just the, the process of producing the game can take just as long as actually designing the game itself. And the thing is, if you remove that part portion from it and you made an official digital version of this game, I would say a lot more characters could probably come a lot quicker if they wanted to support it that way, um, which I think would be dope. Yeah, personally. but that is kind of something I was going to bring up is working on customs as much as I had uh, really drives kind of that same point home where it's like it's not the process of actually designing the character that really takes the longest time. It's the physically getting it produced and printed and distributed that uh, really makes us take so long. And if it was in a digital format, not necessarily to say we'd want to remove the physical one altogether, but at least with a digital format, you'd be able to get newer characters faster. Right. Uh, I... And you'd be able to get a lot more characters faster because it would cost a lot less to produce them digitally versus... Uh, having to print them physically. And something else with that, too, is like, you know, we, I, I I will tell my experiences, because I haven't actually talked about this on the podcast yet. Um, so recently, about, what was it, maybe a month ago or so now, when Perfectly Wretched was released, there was a new wave of all of the expansions slash the base game, and they actually got a new reprint. And for those of you who do not know this, um, with the base game, if you look at the back of your box near the barcode, I believe, I could be wrong, um, there is a little addition, like, what is it, code, that talks about if it's, like, U.S. edition, or game one edition one, or something like that. And there was a third edition that actually went back and modified a lot of the text to make it a lot more in line with a lot of what the expansions were introducing. And what happened with me was I found out that there was a second printing of the expansions, and I went and got a hold of those, and there wasn't anything updated. And the thing is, is that we haven't really gotten a clear, you know, reason why everything got printed besides from some Twitter tweets. But even the Twitter tweets are so vague that I don't still know what is different about those boxes. And if you have a digital yeah. format, you know, from my fighting game experience, a lot one of the big things that we love when a new patch comes out is reading the patch notes. And that would honestly help when a new patch comes live for the game, whether you introduce a character or you just do a big update in general. We would actually finally be able to figure out what the hell the cards are meant to do and what they're supposed to do. Um, well, not only uh, with that, but obviously you have the case of we wouldn't be paying for the same box twice. That is also a true statement. Uh, just to have two or three things actually fixed. But um... Yeah. Um, and I actually do not know if Ravensburger would actually, like, if there were changes within the box and you already owned it, if they would be willing to send you the reprint materials or whatnot. I have not heard of them doing that. Um, so, but yeah. Um, now, I guess we'll go into my number one thing I want. And I think the biggest thing that I personally want is to be able to play against a CPU. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I know that, <laughs> that sounds would be a good one. I know that sounds really like, oh, that's really obvious, but I think well, it's surprisingly like not because when you compare this game to something like a different card game, right? Um, a lot of other card games are very build dependent, right? Uh, and having a single AI to run, you know even four or five different styles uh, in any other game would be a really deep and complex issue. But with Villainous, you can kind of build the AI directly into the deck itself 
and it really wouldn't be that difficult. Um, no. The only thing would be like designing multiple uh, like difficulty levels, but even then, yeah, that really just boils down to like giving different percentage chances of playing X condition or you know like trying to play optimally. Yeah, I um I know from reading a lot of AI because as someone who teaches technology, I have to look up this stuff as well as actually like um reading the devlogs on how they developed like AI for particular fighting games. I know there is definitely like what makes this a lot easier, like what you were saying with like your different like build like deck builds, is that when you have to build an AI for something like Hearthstone, you you would have to literally build the AI to understand what to do based off its difficulty level for the cards that it's given in hand. Because there are so many decks that you would have to craft the AI for that it's incredibly just super... It's not. It wouldn't necessarily be complicated to build the algorithm. It just... It's more of like... You're not, you don't feel like you're playing against a player. You feel like you're playing against a machine that has a random number generator. While right. real AI... When you have a fixed set of things to do, similar to like a fighting game, you can actually program it to like, all right, if so, like in fighting game terms, so if a player jumps in the air, is going to do a jump attack. If the AI character has an uppercut move so they can try to strike down that air attack, you can program that in for them to read like where that's going to be. Um, and you can program different levels of that to read, uh, cause I know like in Killer Instinct, they actually have like an AI built specifically to that reads every single input and it's meant for you to basically have to cheat the way through the game, but then they have a one that's right below. That's a normal difficult AI. That's not going to literally read your inputs, but that's kind of how those games work. Um, with Villainous, since every character is unique, you can at least build the AI for each individual character. Um, to match how they would want you to play or how you want them to play against. And I think as and some, yeah. Even necessarily be that, that hard either because a lot of the cards in this game tend to have repeating or like uh, thematic sort of effects. Like you have the general defeat hero with X strength conditions or you have the like just the scrying divination cards, you know, they're kind of all the same thing. It'd be right. easy to recycle. Yeah, you wouldn't have a lot of weird, like, the a lot of the effects are unified on how they would work um, to build out, so it wouldn't be super complex. Yeah. Um, now, with that being said, I think the bit now the thing the biggest thing with playing against the AI is the fact that, you know, um, I generally enjoy playing this game enough that, like, I was actually the other night, or like last night, it's... Sometimes I don't necessarily want to interact with a human playing this game all the time, but if I was playing against an AI, I wouldn't mind trying to run, like, a match or two before, like, I went to bed. And um, that's kind of, like, what I would like from this game, because, you know, we ta I, I'm granted, I am really absorbing the fact every time I have human connection right now, based off the world that we're in. But there are times where I don't necessarily want to talk to people, and actually having that ability to not talk to somebody and play this game is like super helpful. I think too, depending yeah, on like, definitely. yeah, def depending on how social of a human or, being you are. Yeah, for someone who just wants to like practice without being under fire or without like f feeling super pressured, if that makes sense. Right. Um, um, I agree. Definitely having something where you can just practice the specific patterns of okay. Combo, 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 win. Right, exactly. Uh, it's actually a really good nice for time sure. for you to, like, train, too. If you're trying to learn a new character and, like, all their you know, itty-bitty pieces, instead of having to, like, actually play against a human being, you can actually just... Um, oh, without a doubt, yeah. Oh, you can just play against an AI, and then you no longer feel that weird sense of guilt where you're like, oh, no. All right, I, they're, they're going to make fun of me if I lose or if I do something stupid, you know, that type of thing. There is definitely that side of this as well that definitely helps, um, too. So, I think that's, like, the biggest thing for me. So, that way, like, I, I just, like, I'm literally, like, right now as we're recording the podcast, I'm, like, looking at my iPad, and I'm, mm -hmm. like, oh, I can literally hop into bed, play two or three matches of Villainous before I go to bed if it was on my iPad. Or if I, I can easily just, if I could easily just pull it up as an application on my computer. Hell, even my PlayStation. You could put that damn thing on my PlayStation, I would play put it. Put it on Nintendo Switch for crying out loud. Oh, oh, okay. It's Definitely not like it, it would be super intense. Yeah, put it <laughs> put it on Switch before you put it on PlayStation. Um, that would that would be awesome. Um, 
but yeah, I think that's the I think that's the biggest thing for me. Now, when we go into so let's go into maybe more of the little nitty gritty details about this. Um, just I don't want to necessarily call this a wish list, but definitely things that the game needs to have besides obviously AI. Obviously, we know it needs yeah. to have some type of online interactive uh, interactive interactivity. I couldn't think of the word for five seconds. <laughs> Tells you where my brain is right now. Um, yeah, really. Yeah, but. You know, obviously having the the online way to play. Now, when it comes to the yeah. online format, um, would you just want to play casually? Is that all you would really want with this game? Or would you want some type well, of, like, matchmaking ranked system of some sorts? I feel like having options for both would be the best way to go. Because I know there are a lot of people who do like to look at this game a bit more competitively. Okay. And I want them to be able to have something to go off of, even if it's just like Smash Bros. GSP kind of thing. Right. Um, just some sort of whatever. I guess. Uh, but at the same time, you know, casual is good. Everything yeah. doesn't have to be a competition, guys. No, no, I absolutely um, agree. And I, I actually can attest from my personal experience actually playing Dragon Ball Fighters, where I was getting to the point playing ranked where I was stressing myself out. Because when you play ranked, there is always this little thing of, all right, I'm losing points or my win-loss ratio is not good and you just don't yeah. want to play the game anymore. But when you just want yeah, to play just... casually, you can still play competitively, just not with this background of, okay, I have to play to be yeah, the very you best. You can do it without having the rest of the world eyeing you down the whole time. Right, exactly. <laughs> and um, something else, too, that would be awesome with that would be giving you all the different options of, like, how many players do you want to play with? Um, yeah. You know, that, that type would be of thing. good, too, like a preferred rule set kind of thing. That would be good. Yeah. Because, um, obviously, you want to have this game make it so you can play with the max six players. Absolutely. Right. Um, oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, I'd even say, like, you could probably figure out a way to set it up so you could do more if you really, really wanted to. Yeah. You probably you probably could, but it, it I think something, too, that they would need to make sure that they would do is, you know, obviously, if you're playing digitally, it's going to move a, a little bit faster than if you play in person. Um, yeah. So you would have to make sure that you can match the speed and also, like, turns would have to have a a set timer on them. Yeah, know? time time limit or something. Yeah. But that's that's pretty that's pretty normal uh, that, in most card that games. That does kind of lead me into something else that I just thought about though, but um Go for obviously it. uh an automated like uh rule set like What do you mean by that? Uh, like uh what am I thinking? Brain. Remember that? Uh, <laughs> uh like uh rules enforcement. Okay. Uh, for like all these problems we've been having on the server lately with like, does this work or does X work or what happens if I you gotcha. defeat Rapunzel with the frying pan, like stuff like that. Those little questionable rule things that would technically have an official answer that way. Yeah. I, I think one of the thing too, though, with the app though, that is the app would have to come up with those official rulings on its own because then like what you're doing in the granted, obviously options are always better. Um, is that you would do something like, I don't know if Smash Online does this, but obviously Smash Brothers does this in general, where you basically have all the different like ways you can play. Like, what items do you want to include? Or how long do you want the match to go? How many stocks do you want to have? You know, it can get really detailed really fast. Um, I don't know if yeah. Smash does that for online, um, necessarily. But well, I they know... They kind of do the preferred rule set thing, so... Yeah, I think... Because I, I think with the with this being digital, I think one of the things I look forward to is actually having like un, like knowing what the card is going to do in this particular situation. When and normally is a little bit more ambiguous. There is only like sure it could still be open on what you can use it with, but it has only like it's fixed rules that it can interact with. It, you can't you can't move outside of that bubble, if that makes sense. So that way we can finally get some answers to things that we've been. Um, looking for as well as like, oh, this is kind of the official way you can play it type of way. Um, so that way we no longer have to question the rules every five seconds. That would yeah. be nice. That, that, that's that's kind of one of the things. Because most other, and you brought up Hearthstone earlier, and that's a perfectly good example. But like all of the cards for Hearthstone are more or less scripted to do the actual uh, legwork for you. And all you have to do is pick, okay, this card, this card, this card, go. 
Um, I feel like taking the ambiguity out a lot, a lot of those wordings that way would be nice. Um, plus, with a digital version, it'd be pretty easy for them to figure out, oh, maybe that's not how we meant for that card to go and then go patch it. Right, exactly. I think that's definitely, uh, you know, hell, maybe we'll actually finally see Ursula, Ursula get good. Ursula work, right? Yeah, I know, exactly. Mm. Ariel gets nerfed, <laughs> you know. We can actually finally play her, thank God. Um, yeah, really. Yeah, seriously. But um, now, uh, obviously, we could, we could talk online, you know, statistical stuff all day. But obviously, obviously, you obviously want to ranked, casual, hopefully get some of that stuff fixed in, entirely. Make it so you can play, choose what player account you want to play with. Um, obviously, also make it, too, so you can play with your friends so you don't have to necessarily just do random matchmaking. Um, yeah. yeah. That's something I would personally like. Um, how they would do that, I'm not 100% sure if you're doing like, – because I keep thinking of the t- type of audience they would build this thing for, and I feel like the iPad would be one of their general audiences. Um, it would be for sure. Um, the biggest thing about something like that is you'd have to think about how easy – cross-platforming would be because like you we brought up you brought up playstation i brought up the switch i mean if there's a desktop oh yeah version of it through steam or something you just have to figure out how to com- connect all of those things it's and obviously now in uh, this day and age all games are starting to be cross-play cross-platform all they that are stuff. and that's a pretty big server cost yeah on top of just the mechanical how would they uh make all of those things interact with each other. Cause I mean, a lot of this cross play stuff has really only existed for like a year or two. Yeah. Well, for my uh, knowledge of how as far it works, PlayStation. Yeah. Well, honestly, my, <laughs> what, from my understanding of how it works is that you pretty much can get it. Uh, like it's a flip of the switch type of ordeal in most scenarios. Um, it's just more of the fact that PlayStation was, was kind of being anal for the longest time. So it made yeah, it a little yeah, bit more yeah. wonky to yeah. work around. Um, but apparently it's, it's not that hard stuff. to do. So, but that's a whole nother can of worms. But definitely, you want to have crossplay. I think that would be really good to make yeah, it so. It's just a matter of how they would go about doing it. Because yeah. if they tried to connect it all through accounts on one of their own servers, that's really expensive. Right. But then, where else would you do it? Exactly. And uh, then, like, it'd be a fun challenge for them to try to tackle. And yeah, and on top of that too, for those of you, and it's funny, we're getting really technical on a show about board games. Um, yeah, really. Yeah, but uh, for those of you who don't understand how some matchmaking stuff works in your video games, is that some matches, um, so obviously we talked about servers, and some of those servers are like in a server farm somewhere that the company owns. And that's why you might be noticing a lot of your online games from like the 360 PlayStation 3 era are going away, because a lot of those games had to be hosted on a server somewhere. Now, other games um, actually make it so you the your connection, like where it's being hosted, is directly from a player. So rather than it being hosted on a server somewhere, and there's probably still some, like, you know, the general, like, the Xbox server or the PlayStation server, but it's not, like, you know, example, like, a Call of Duty game. Like, a Call of Duty game is being hosted on a giant server somewhere that Activision owns, at least from what my understanding of how that stuff works. Um, but, like, in a fighting game, as obviously you know, I'm the fighting game nerd of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> fighting games make it so um, one player is technically the host of the match. So you never a uh, fighting game essentially would never have to go away unless it was built weirdly. We actually found this out recently. Um, for those of you who are following the news, that Mortal Kombat Nine, uh, it's GameSpy. It's it was actually hosted through a server through that GameSpy thing, and GameSpy finally went down. So they actually finally had to start taking some of the the server load down for Mortal Kombat Nine. But they re- they actually fixed that later on, so that way it's now PvP focused. So it just kind of depends on what they want to do, because um, based off how you build that, it also can cause different like uh, connection issues. Um, obviously, if your host disconnects, the entire match disconnects. That that type of ordeal. Um, so it's just kind of a whole networking thing, and them trying to yeah. figure that out um, depends on how much Disney uh, Disney wants to throw money at this too. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the other big elephant in the room is yeah. uh, how Disney feels about that kind of thing. I mean, they want to throw money at stuff. Like, you see, the, you see all these mobile games that they're making? You and just... I hate to be the guy that brings it into it again. Do it. But not too long ago, I think it's just been a few years now, uh, Kingdom Hearts launched a mobile game. Right. Um. I hate to bring Kingdom Hearts into it again. Do it. But um, just do it. I think 
if they wanted to do something along that route, uh, Disney's obviously open to the idea of mobile games. Uh, yeah. So I... it, on the one hand, Disney would probably be okay with it, and they probably even uh, dedicate some of their workload to it, honestly. I know uh, for but it's yeah. just. I know for a fact Disney is working, or Disney Interactive, or Disney Games is actually trying to like uh, grow a little bit. Yeah, um, Disney they get, Interactive has been kind of small for a while. Yeah, they actually recently just poached one of the head marketing guys from PlayStation as like one of the new leads for the Disney Games um, direction. Because I don't think it's no longer called Disney Interactive. I think it's called like Disney Games or something like that. I yeah, could be probably. wrong. But I know they're trying to change the... I, I think that sounds know. about right, because I know there hadn't been a game with Disney Interactive on it since, like, Epic Mickey. <laughs> yeah, because uh, right now, really all they're doing is mobile games. But I know for a fact, I know for a fact they are working on games, because for those of you who were looking at April Fool's recently, uh, there was a little company that put out these little screenshots of a, of a DuckTales game, and we all thought it was real for a second. And then they <laughs> said, it's not real, but they pitched it to Disney, which means that Disney right now is working on a new DuckTales game, and they're looking for pitches. Potentially. Cause usually, yeah, potentially. Because usually how this works, this actually happened with Killer Instinct, um, usually a company that's looking for, like, hey, we want to make this type of a game, they're just looking for a developer to make it. Um, it just depends on what developer they want to go with, and they, everyone just pitches different ideas. So... Um, not to say, and maybe what they want to do, because obviously it seems like they're trying to ramp up on this division and get outside of the mobile market, is they want to actually start making games on that level. Because I'll tell you one thing, if that DuckTales thing that, they, that, that those people on Twitter showed off was was a, just a pitch, I want to see what the real thing that they're going with is <laughs> going to look like, because that looked marvelous. And obviously they got money to throw at people to make things look good. So... I'm not worried about that part, because um, God, if Disney put a whole bunch of money into into this game. I would cry. Yeah, it'd be beautiful. Um, speaking of aesthetic stuff, let's talk a little bit on the the artsy the artsy fartsy side of this game. So, um, I'm a huge graphic design nerd. I don't know about you, Ditto. Hmm. Not my thing that much. Not your thing uh, that much? I just, I, I don't get art. No. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I, I am not an artist per se, but as a web developer, I have come a keen eye when it comes to just like, I like graphic design and stuff like that. Um, yeah. If it went, Once I finally get more time, I kind of want to rework some of the art for the, the podcast and the channel a little bit, um, just because I just need extra time to dedicate to it. But I think one of the biggest things I would really dig from the art style of this game is that if the realm actually looks like a realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like have like animated stuff for the boards. That'd yeah. Cool. I don't, I don't, so yeah, because the, the board itself, because like I was thinking about, like say, just pick out Scar, because I always think of Scar. Um, like when you go to Pride Rock, like Pride Rock actually has like the 3D detail of like what Pride Rock's supposed to look like from the movie. And if you go right. to Savannah... And all that stuff, and it makes like little sound effects when you like land on it a little bit. I think that would be yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, something like the uh, Monopoly. Oh yeah, like the three D monopolies that they make. Yeah, that that would be cool. Yeah, I would do um, that. I for one would be interested along those lines in, and I know we've kind of mentioned this before, but like having a little snippet of the song play whenever you play one of the songs. Oh yes, song title cards. Oh my god, yes. Because I think just about every villain in the game right now has one. Right. Or there's um, at least some song you can pull from the movie itself. Or that at would least work just well. have like the theme song playing in the background or something when it's their turn. Just something like that to really give it the ambience it needs. One of the things I really dug about a little card game recently called Teppin. If you guys don't know what Teppin is, it is basically Capcom's version of like a Hearthstone where they're just basically using a bunch of like Capcom characters like Street Fighter, Mega Man, all that stuff. And like you choose like a main hero as like the main portion of your deck and that's how you deck build. But when you go up against somebody, you hear a remixed version of like that character's theme from their game. So like when you play against right. Mega Man... Uh, X, or technically X, you hear the Mega Man X theme remixed in the background of, of the match. I think that'd be awesome to have something yeah, like it that. Would. 
it would be so dope. Just you don't, wouldn't just necessarily have to use the, the same mood, thing. Right? Yeah, it, it just sets the mood. <laughs> I just just thinking of doctor the doctor having friends on the other side play, and it was like some right. like small remix instrumental version. Oh my god, um, that'd be so perfect. Um, speaking of sound, definitely. Definitely want it so every time you play a card, there's some type of sound that goes with it. Whether it's a quote or uh, a sound effect. Because I know one of the big things that I really dig about Hearthstone is that every time you play a card, it essentially has its own personality. Because when you play it out on the board, it Im- immediately just pops off the sound effect. Um, yeah. And I really dig that. I really hope they do that. Cause, and they wouldn't necessarily need to re-record any dialogue. They can just rip it straight from the movies. They don't have to do anything crazy. I think that'd be super, super. I mean, awesome. even if it wasn't necessarily dialogue or anything, if it was just like a sound effect. Yeah. Um, because you don't necessarily want to make it too busy, but at the same time, uh, g- giving it some sort of presence would be really cool. Yeah, because I can, I can even think of uh, like let's say if you're playing m- m- uh, blah, words, uh, Maleficent, and you use vanish, you know, like having just like a vanish sound effect from the movie or something like that come into play. I think that'd be yeah. really good. You know, things like it that. Yeah. You know, just to really help make the game pop and stuff like that. Um, I think there's a lot of really cool artistic stuff that they can do to make this game feel really alive. Um, obviously, you're, like you said, you don't want to go too overboard because then it's too busy. And then it kind of removes the whole fact that you're playing a board game. Because I think that's definitely one thing they have to be careful about. You know, you still want this to feel like a board game. Um you don't want this to feel like you're playing some type of 3D game that's got cards involved. That's definitely <laughs> right. something. It's definitely something you want to ignore. Because I, I was thinking, I was just in my brain when I was picturing what I have for like a Scar 3D realm. If you're playing cards to the realm, it does not would would not look right. Especially if you had part of it like 3D and you played a hero on top of like the block location portion, that would just look a little awkward. Right. Yeah. And I guess one possible fix for that, if they really wanted to go down the the super artistic road, would be to actually have the cards represented as models, like huh. in the environment. Okay. How, how um, would you? How would you? How would you? So like, like when you would play a card, essentially, like let's say, like if it was an ally, that ally becomes part of the environment per se, or like the hero becomes part of that environment. Yeah, like like with Scar, like you bring it up, you play a hyena and just like a little. A little group of hyenas appear just as a model in that okay. uh, location. I'm thinking if it looks, it looks like like civilization, where like when you click on a kind of yeah, something yeah, you, like that. Yeah, I don't know. That that's an interesting way to go about doing that. I think that'd be a, that'd be a good way to help the clutterness. Um, it, it would help declutter a lot of things, and it would help new players who aren't really used to the idea of a card game necessarily understand. Okay, this is what this is represented by. Right. A little bit. Yeah. Um, I like that. I think it's a good idea. I, I And you don't have like five or six char- like character pileups all in one place. Yeah, because that's definitely... that. You know, I love this game, but that is definitely something I've found the more that I play this game, where essentially what happens is that you get to a point where you have a location that is just stacked with cards, and... I know in, like, Tabletop Simulator, just the way that the, our particular mod was made, um, that, like, sometimes your, like, the stack of cards can actually end up going into your hand by accident, yeah, depending on how far cards. you stack it. <laughs> but, I mean, that happens in the real game, too. And plus, when you cover cards, usually you end up accidentally covering art or effects, and I usually don't like doing that if I don't yeah. have to. Because um, that's... Uh, I that's, think especially yeah. if... The game, like if we're hypothesizing about the digital copy actually happening, yes, um, and they true. go to a more digital side and they start adding a bunch of new characters, it becomes less of an issue for them to, like, they don't have to consider really big card pileups, like taking up physical space on a table. Right. So you can start having a lot more fun with uh, location based stuff and what goes where effects if you just eliminate that kind of physical restraint of the game. Right. Because I, I was even thinking, because like I was, because most char- most characters I think don't really d- like, like by default by design they aren't really meant to have a giant pile up at one location. The only one I would say is the real exception to that is probably Pete, because he Pete. a lot of his goals revolve around just stacking a bunch of cards yeah. in one location. 
Pete, Pete definitely encourages having pileups. I think Scar encourages pileups. Scar does bad. too. I think You're Hook right. Encourages pileups pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, Maleficent can. Yeah, very situational. Uh, Ursula kind of can on the hero side of the board. Oh yeah, definitely for sure. God, that would look um, weird. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, John kind of can with the hero side if he's trying to. Uh, hoard them all in the jail. Yeah. yeah I was going to uh, say, I never actually thought about, like, the 3D model way of just trying to declutter the board. I think that's a really good idea. Way to go. Designer and, and, did it over that here. Would, even if it's just allies and heroes, like, you don't necessarily have to do that to items because some of the items, like the hairbrush or, like, the stopwatch or something, don't necessarily make sense. But just getting the allies out of the way for a lot of characters would um, make everything look just look cleaner. Yeah. That, that is definitely for sure. Um, obviously, they would have to find a way to make that. Because I think the only thing that, for me personally, is that I really like the nature of how the game is built, where the the cards fit perfectly on, along the, the locations, and it's kind of got yeah. this nice grid feel to it. So when you do that, you remove the grid feel that kind of still makes it feel like a board game. But the way that the game is also played and designed, it's meant for, like you said, there's a lot of different scenarios where you can just start stacking cards on top of a particular location. And then, you know, even, well, I know we deal with this in, the, in the, the mod, but, like, I've played the game physically plenty of times where you, like, in order to stack a bunch of cards at one location, you have to start sliding things on top of each other. Yeah, without a doubt. And I'll go ahead and throw this one out there, too, the Queen of Hearts. Oh, yeah. Uh, constantly rotating cards around and kind of breaking that grid mold. Yeah, um, oh, that's true. And Hades. Very, very yeah. bad about cluttering up available table space uh, that could pretty easily be avoided by decluttering it that way. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think, too, I mean, and, and that's an easy way to get around that, and that's for both Queen of Hearts and Hades, with, like, if you need to just tilt the card, all you got to do is, like, literally you turn the card into a wicket. Uh, you turn the the Titan so it's like downed or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's not there's not uh, a whole lot of just crazy do a stuff. visual indicator for the model, right? Instead of any instead of something else, just to to help not have everything clog up so much. Because yeah. when you get to things that take up more like physical space than normal, that's fine, I guess. But yeah, with the, a digital version would streamline a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So here's a question for you, and this is this is more of a preference thing. So like when it comes to like the character movers, do you keep the character mover models that they use from the the physical board game, or do you actually make it the actual character? I think with the that's a tough one. I know. I think it's a tough one too. Uh, because it depends a lot on how artistic you decide to get. Yeah, I if agree. you go full on like Hearthstone, like make it look more like a scene and less like a board game, then having it be a model of the character themselves would be really cool. Right. Uh, if they try to preserve the actual board game aspect a little more, I think modding the movers over would be fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to complain. They're all designed really well. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not complaining about the movers either because, you know, just with us talking about this whole ally hero um, decluttering thing, it, it was making me think of, you know, if you have all these 3D models that are representing these characters out on the... Yeah, like animal, having one for the villain themselves, I mean, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it'd just be a clash of art styles, I think, a little bit. Because I could see when they would, if they would, the art for this game, the digital version, they would go either one of two ways. They would either go with full-on making it a very, like, cinematic, you got, like, the character models out and stuff like that. Or they try to make it very much like, um, you know, a very, a very board gamey where they try to keep yeah. the board game aesthetic with a few little flares and stuff like that, but nothing too crazy to the point where, um, you know, we're getting all the 3D models and stuff. I would like either one. I do I, I do think they're, like, using the digital format would help with some of the things like clutter and, um, you know, keeping the board clean and stuff like that. Um, I think that, I think those are some, I think those are some good things right there, Ditto. You taught, taught me some things I wasn't even thinking about before <laughs> entering this conversation. Oh, good. I appreciate that. Now, Not a problem. is there any, there there's another thing I'm going to get to here in a second, but I'm going to wait and ask you. Is there anything else that you really want if they made a digital version besides your customs? I know you want uh, your customs, that's but the, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest it, thing you really want. That would be like the one 
thing I would want most, or at least like an option to. I don't know. That, that that would be the biggest thing. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Like now, everything else is just icing on the cake, but. Eh. <laughs> no, I got gotcha. you. Um, now we obviously can go super dive deep into like the way the game would look and be played, but obviously, you know, there's tons of digital card games out there that have kind of already like solved a lot of issues of like, how do you take a turn? How do you play a card? You know, all that stuff. We don't necessarily need to go into that because those things are honestly really solvable. There's lots of ways around that. I think the biggest thing right now is how likely do you actually think this is going to happen? Like, obviously, there's no, there is no rumors, there is no whatever. Yeah, there's no any indication that this is actually a thing. This is yeah. purely hypothetical, purely speculation, right. for now. Correct. <laughs> yeah, for now. Um, um, I I will start because I already ha- and because I know you probably don't have all your thoughts completely 100 percent there, um, but I will say this. I think a lot of games recently that are super big are getting digital formats. So two that come to mind are Root and Wingspan. Those are two yep. incredibly popular tabletop games. Two of that are, if you go on Board Game Geek, I'm pretty sure and they're at least in the top 100, if not like 200 uh, games on the listing. They are incredibly popular. Um, Villainous is not anywhere in that realm, but they are in the top 1,000. I think last time I checked, they were in, like, the 700 range, which is still really good. Um, I actually don't know at the top of my head. But it it is definitely... This is definitely a game that is, in the public eye, people know about this game. Like, regardless if you've played it or not, they know about it. It's the same thing with, like, Root or Wingspan. If you are in the tabletop industry, you know of those games. It's the same thing with stuff like everyone has heard of Catan... Or Monopoly, and if you want to dive a little deeper, you've heard of things like uh, Tokaido or Star Realms, and those games also have digital formats. I actually played the Tokaido one recently because they actually put a free uh, edition out of it because of the world, and I was really incredibly impressed of like how well that game runs on an iPad. Um, yeah, I think depending on how big the Marvel one is, I think we definitely can see it. Now, here's the catch. Um, I personally don't think we will get a digital version of this game until we're close to wrapping up the game. Um, I think they still want people to be buying the game as much as they can, choose to get up to eat up those physical copies. Um, oh, just, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, but I think once they get closer to when they know the, the Disney line of this is going to be done for them, I think that's when they would try to push it out. Because usually what I've kind of noticed... Um, and I also just know this from reading the devlogs of Root, is that a lot of board games in general, like once they know that they're done with the game or the game's out and they don't plan on adding anything else to it, they'll put out a digital version. This happened with Tokaido um, as well. Um, and obviously, you know, Monopoly has hundreds of versions of it out already just because it's freaking Monopoly. Um, right. But I, w- I think what would happen is that they would use the Disney version to test the waters, and it's horrible to say it like this, but they would test the waters to see how well a Marvel version of this would work. And then they would probably really capitalize on a Marvel version. Um, you would have to build two different games, because obviously the two games we know for a fact are going to work a little differently, so mechanically they could not like combine very well together. And um, you know, in an ad- official digital format... Even though they've told us, like, hey, go find ways around this. Um, you know, you can, find, you can find ways based off the engine because the engine's still basically the same. Um, yeah. I, a digital, it would require you with a digital version to have to probably make two separate SKUs with two different engines because obviously the, the games are running off of two different mechanical gameplay-wise engines to make it work. And then they would just hone in super hard on a Marvel one. Um, I think that's what they would do. Um, and I think Ravensburger right now does not currently have a digital version of any of their big games. And I think they're, uh, I'm just being very frank of all of Ravensburger's, Ravensburger's games that I know of. Disney Villainous is the biggest one they have. They have really yeah. good games, but the Disney Villainous is the one that when you think of Ravensburger making tabletop games, that is the one everybody thinks of it from the get go. There are obviously other ones like, um, Horrified and Jaws, and even the Minecraft one, but definitely for sure, 
Villainous is the one that they have that if they were going to put their big tentpole tabletop game in a digital format, that is the one they do. Um, I would say we probably don't hear anything about it this year, but if we probably don't hear about it within the next year or two, we, it's probably not going to happen. Um, it kind of depends on what their decision is with the Disney line, but we'll have to see more. But I definitely do think it's, I think it's going to happen when it's going to happen. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen as soon as I would like it to happen, but I think it will happen. Um, they they know the tabletop simulator mod. They know how much we like using it, and I don't think they would take it away from us because I actually know for a fact that there's some playtesting that is sometimes used with it sometimes. Um, but um, but yeah, so that is my two cents on the matter. I do think it will happen. I think the other issue that you have to get around with it too is that even though Ravensburger technically is the publisher, Disney owns the IP. So I think that is a whole other can of worms in itself. If Disney wants to get involved with that, how much money would they be putting in? Um, because if it's not directly published by Disney games and it's more of a Ravensburger thing, the whole how much money you get to put into the project is a little different. So it just it's a whole little yeah. weird bag of worms. So that's my two cents. I think it's that exact sort of complicated relationship there that is actually going to be the thing that holds it back from being done at all. Really? Um, I feel like as good a game as it is and as good Ravensburger is at developing games, I don't know that they necessarily have the team to pull a digital version off in their own studio. Well, yeah. And I also don't know that I can see them handing off development exclusively to Disney in that regard. Yeah, I uh, usually, well, from what my understanding and the research I've done on this is that usually what happens is that a board game publisher basically contacts a developer. And that developer then builds the digital version of the game. Now, there are very, very, very interesting exceptions to this rule. Fantasy Flight Games actually just started a studio in Wisconsin for Fantasy Flight digital stuff, and that's why if you see that Lord of the Rings card game online thing, that is essentially the Lord of the Rings LCG being put into a digital format. Um, but and that's because Fantasy Flight obviously just did not want to, you know, have to keep contracting studios to go make digital stuff for them. Yeah. They wanted to have their own studio, so you know that takes care of that whole weird scenario. Um, they get to play, pay their own employees and actually have to complete control of a project. Yeah. Um, now obviously, that, that, yeah, that that's the big hangup for me is I don't know how they would work out the minutia of either finding somebody who would be willing to go on contract for them, or if they'd be willing to offload it to Disney interactive. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, um, it's weird. It's a weird. It's a weird situation. I think it's doable, and I think and there's no. enough developers out there that, you know, because here's the other thing you have to understand too. And this is what Marvel Games, because technically Marvel's under Disney, but Marvel Games itself is a different division than the Disney licensed games portion itself. Is that Marvel Games made the decision after they scrapped all of their things with Activision that instead of basically giving their license to a publisher and allowing that publisher to basically make whatever games they want with the studios that that publisher owns, they were going to go out and seek their own developers to go work on their own games. And that's how you got games like the Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. That's how you're getting Iron Man VR. That's how you got Ultimate Alliance 3. They don't own any of those studios, but they went and found studios that were really good at the things that they wanted to do. Because, like, uh, I forget if was it, it wasn't it Team Ninja. What is the other one? I forget the... No. Yeah, it was Team Ninja. Was it Team Ninja put together Ultimate Alliance 3 because they have a history of putting together action games. Um, yeah. That is their history. Um, and then um, I forget what the studio that did Iron Man VR, but they had a history of doing really good VR games. And then, you know, with, P with Spider-Man PS4, they were like, all right, who can capture personality of Spider-Man along with all of his cool gadgets? Oh, Insomniac. Because Insomniac, literally, that's their whole gimmick is they build these worlds... And they give them their characters weird gadgets, you know. I think they could find a developer that would be able to treat it with justice. And I think yeah. the Disney portion, I think, is where it becomes a little weird. Um, but I don't think, because obviously, you know, Disney wants this product to continue. You know, like this is a this they is a, absolutely yeah. do, and it's pre pretty obvious. Like just going through 
everything. Like if they definitely, I could see Disney wanting this to continue for a long time. I agree. Cause this is like the first, I think this is the first mainline like tabletop game that Disney's ever really been successful in. Right. Um, so keeping this line alive would be really good. And part of why I think digital would be good because again, you can keep a digital game alive for ever if you have the money for it. Right, exactly. If you're willing to put the money into it and keep funding the um, project. And to be fair, if you want to draw comparisons to other tabletop games, like we mentioned earlier, Monopoly has a bunch of digital ports. Right. That are pretty easily accessed. Um, there have been several board game compilations with like other Hasbro games, like the Game of Life and Mousetrap and stuff. Uh, the Settlers of Catan had a digital version that I think is still going, yeah, still available. Yeah, it is. Um, stuff like Ticket to Ride. Oh yeah, Ticket I've to Ride's a big one. Of. Yeah, uh, and a, a lot of those all have expansion like things. Um, yeah. that would kind of work in the same way that Villainous could. So there is precedent for stuff like this existing. I just don't know with how difficult it would be to get Disney on board with potentially a third-party uh, developer for it if they'd be willing to go through with it. I don't know. I have to. I would have it to would go. Be cool. Yeah, I would have to go look this uh, up, but. Do you remember, what is it, those damn, what is it, the little weird, like, caterpillar Disney character looking things where they looked like bugs? They were like Tsum Tsums or whatever they were called? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, think th I think that's right. So I think, the, I think that's it. Disney actually contracted Bandai Namco to make a Tsum Tsum game for the Switch. Do you know of this? Did they? Yes, they did. When did that happen? I need to, I need to go look it up <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's on the Switch because every time I go jump in, because sometimes I just go look up words uh, by keywords on the Switch store, and there right. is a game. Here, I'm going to look it. I'm going to see if I can look it up really fast. Um, I don't even know. Yeah, I go. did not realize yeah, that that had happened. I'm going to type it in. I'm going to make sure I got the – If I'm pretty sure it was Bandai and Amco. I'm looking this up right now. Doing it live. Doing it – yeah. Zoom Zoom Festival for Nintendo Switch. I'm going to go to the official website right now. Who made this game? I'm looking it up. Bandai Namco. Really? Yes. So if they can work with a Japanese developer of Bandai Namco, they can definitely make That's a damn villainous application of this game. Let's just be That's very upfront. Interesting. Yes. Dude, that changes the everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All man. right, then. Yeah. Uh, so instead, I think it's totally conceivable that it could happen. <laughs> um... I, honestly, knowing that and uh, knowing how everything is, within a year is actually believable now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, easily. I just blew Ditto's mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. I had no idea. Uh, that changes everything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it could totally be done. Yeah. Um, it really, if it weren't for the fact that customs wouldn't exist, uh, I'd be completely for it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I that's that's just that's the one thing you'd be losing. I guess the I guess the biggest and you know I know you have been working on some customs outside of the Disney realm um, that we've we've worked with or I've seen off camera or I've been told off off camera at least. Um, I uh, would you like the I guess the biggest thing is like is would you still want to be making customs in terms of like the Disney cast but or is it really more the fact that you want to just be able to make customs of any kind? I just like the being able to run like run customs in the engine. Like okay, I got the you. game itself is uh, fun enough, but at the same time, like some of my favorite ones have been the Disney ones, right? Uh, so it'd be sad to kind of see that go away, but I could live with it probably. Okay, I mean, like, I'm, I'm not actually I actually wouldn't be that salty over it, but no, I I, I definitely don't want to. I, I never want to make it so it, a, a large group of people lose something that they love. But I do, you know, recently playing more tabletop simulator and stuff and, like, playing the game in the flesh, I just kind of, like, realized, you know, I love tabletop simulator, but sometimes it can get a little clunky. And it's not, and it's yeah. not, the, it's not the fault of our, our wonderful mo modder Elden. It's more the fact that it's the fact... It's, it's just it's, tabletop simulator. It's just tabletop simulator. It's just weird. It's got wonky physics. It's got... Yeah, it's, it's, it 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 acts funny. Yeah, it acts a little <laughs> funny. It's still it's still great, and I will, ne I will I will never 
I will never say that it's not a good tool, especially like I know with place testing my own games, it is a fantastic little tool. Absolutely adore it for that factor. But I would just at this point with how much de- time I've dedicated into this game, I would just love to dedicate more time and just have it be a yep. little bit more feasible. You know, even if I, even that meant I never played someone online again, I'd be okay, completely okay playing CPUs that were good. If we got I to mean, that it's, point. it's just a fun way to pass time anyway. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's just a good game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, that's how you should be playing this game is to have a fun time when you pass the time, not trying to sit there and make your eyes bleed by fading every turn. <laughs> you can do it that way too. I mean, I, I could do that to you. Um, yeah. 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 No. yeah. But I don't want. I don't want to do that. Um, that'd be interesting if you put something in the game where it like limits the amount of times you could fate. That'd be. I mean, it's interesting. called a token. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's true. Oh God. Oh God. I just forgot about the token part portion. But, <laughs> you know, I'll let the developers figure out that shenanigans. But. Right. I think. So I think. All, I think all in all, we you know after after this conversation, I think this is a good idea. I think it should be done. Obviously, like we said, this is complete speculation and just, you know, based off the state of the world and, you know, all that stuff. I think it's something that we would want to have happen um, when or if it does at all. We have no idea. Um, Do I wish it was tomorrow? You're damn straight I wish it was tomorrow. (laughs) Screw Final Fantasy VII Remake. I want this game instead. Um, And I'm actually being dead serious on that right now. Um, And someone right now in the comments of the the YouTube portion of this is going to be like, you are a scum, but it's fine. I'm okay with this. <laughs> and he's like, I want my cloud. I want my cloud boy. Well, then guess what? You could go play, you know, play Kingdom Hearts and get best of both worlds. Um, yeah, really. Yeah, let's, let's just be real. But uh, yeah, I'd be super down. I hope it happens. Um, you know, based off my development knowledge, I don't think it'd be super, super difficult to program unless they, you know, they made it difficult for themselves. And um, now the question is, if this were to happen, I assume you would want it on Nintendo Switch, right? Is that your platform of choice? Uh, I mean, I'll take that. I'll take PC. I'll take mobile. I'll take anything. <laughs> I think I think for me personally, I would want it on my Switch. And just because I'm a, I'm a fanboy, I would want it on my PlayStation. I would. Um, yeah. I, think it, I think it'd be hilarious to be like, all right, instead of playing like, you know, The Last of Us or God of War or Spider-Man... I don't play Disney Villainous on my PlayStation 4. Um, right. But, uh, no, I think I think that'd be great, too. I actually, that, this would be one of those games I would buy on multiple systems so I can just have it, like, in multiple different places. So I'm like, I get done playing a, a game on PS4, I'm like, I could run a few matches of, of Villainous before I go do something else and just go do that. Yeah, I, I, that'd be good. Yeah, that, that'd be nice. Um, or especially with me playing Animal Crossing right now, it'd be fun to go boot it up and be like, oh. I'm gonna go play. I'm gonna go play some villainous before I, I go to bed or something like that. So I think that's the biggest thing for me. I wouldn't mind on my iPad, but I think I prefer it on the on the on an actual console. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's enough. I think that's enough on this topic. <laughs> Unless you got anything else to say. Um. Any last thoughts? Not, not really. Not really. I just blew your mind about this whole um, Zoom Zoom thing, right? No, yeah, I can't believe that. Yeah, no, it's I real. Know. I think it was recent too. I think it was only like a few years I, ago. I, I don't know what I believe less: the fact that it exists, the fact that Disney and Namco of all people are yeah, working on it, or the fact that that stupid marketing gimmick was big enough that they thought they needed to make a game out of it. Actually, I, okay, <laughs> to, to end the show, I'm actually going to see when this came out because I actually swear to God, I think it came out during the. The, like the first year the Switch came out, because I think it was like 2016 or something like that. Or no, it might, no, tw- no, it was 2017 when it came out. Hold on a second. Um, all right, hold on. I'm looking this up. Doing it live. Oh, it actually came out last year. Never mind. <laughs> last year? <laughs> what? <laughs> You can buy it right now at GameStop for twenty bucks. I can't believe that. (laughs) Oh yeah, no, it's a real, it's a real game. It's a real ass game. You can buy it at your Best Buy, your Walmart. That has officially become the takeaway of the digital villainous video. Yeah, is apparently Disney's Sum Sum or whatever (laughs) was big enough to. I have to see what was this game about. I have to see what this game was. This is the show is now. So the the new thing about this show 
is now, you know, we have our Kingdom Hearts rants. We have our memes. But now the new thing is going to be the Tsum Tsums. You know, that's what it's going to be. I can't believe that. <laughs> what is it? It had, oh no. It's a Mario it's, Party it's, clone. It's that's what this is. It's a, Mario, it's a Party Mario Party clone. It's a Mario Party clone. Oh, that's wow. That's what it is. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's like it's a bunch of like weird little mini games and stuff like that. That exists. Yeah, ah. and stars the different characters. Oh my god! What a time to be That's alive. Almost unbelievable. What a oh time wow! To be alive. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll end the show on that factor. We just kind of just blew blew our uh, our brains out <laughs> a little bit right there with that knowledge. I just changed Ditto's mind. About this possibly happening over a bunch of Tsum Tsums. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's like He's like, all right, well, Who I don't know if it will that? happen, but now, oh, Tsum Tsums exist? Bandai Namco was involved? Sell me in, damn it. <laughs> I, I mean, really, though? Like, in what galaxy? I mean... Did, did anyone... <laughs> I mean, I like I told you, I know for it because as someone who like watches a lot of gaming news and stuff like that, Disney made a huge push in the last like two years to try to really sit down to redevelop their their games division so it wouldn't be just mobile stuff and they can actually like make games survive. Because I know after the Disney Infinity stuff, um, you can read a bunch of articles on that. Essentially, the biggest issue was Disney uh, or, um, Disney Interactive was trying to do that completely in house and they did not have the team really to develop games or understand how to do that and what killed them was the fact that they overproduced and they didn't understand how much their market was and that's why you always hear the talks of how many like even i think to this day too you can go into like any place that sells games and you could find disney infinity figures that's how much stock that they had and they talked about that was their biggest issue was i know specifically when it came to the second year of disney infinity they talked about how there were so many damn Hulk figures and like I or yeah. not Iron Man, it was like Thor yeah. or something like that. There yeah, was, that sounds right. There, there was just so many of them. That, it was just a tragic, yeah, tragic story all around. Yeah, because honestly, because I actually played a little bit of Disney Infinity. It's actually a pretty cool concept. Like, I mean, it's an alright concept, but Skylanders already did it and it yeah. was already stale when it showed up. Yeah, like, no, it was. And the thing is, they they basically shot themselves in the foot because I, I they didn't even last the whole generation of the Toys for Life stuff. But they admitted no. the fact that they just didn't have the support to do it, and they were using all their in-house resources to do it too. So, um, they they are they're really in, especially knowing now this this possible Ducktales game pitch thing that might be going on in the background. They're obviously trying to do something. Um, so I'm looking forward to see. Um, if this happens at all, or what the future holds with Disney games. But for now, I think we'll end on that note. What do you say? Yeah, I, want, I think we've... I, I think we've gone on enough up. about Tsum Tsums, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't, yeah. Th I don't <laughs> think Ditto's going to be able to sleep tonight. Uh, I'm not. No. This is going to haunt my dreams now. Oh, God. Well, anyway... <laughs> Thank you all for listening to us talk about this. I, let us know in the comments on the YouTube videos or talk to us about it in Discord what you folks would like in an official Disney villainous um, digital format of the game and what you would want to see and what you would want the future to hold. Do you think it's going to happen? Do you want Tsum Tsums to be a villain? Who the hell knows? Will Bandai Namco produce it? Who the hell knows either? But until then, I hope you all are being safe and healthy and please stay wicked.